Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I am recording this at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here in the West Coast on January 10th, 2024. This is the first episode of a new series I'm going to be calling Domentary. If something is intriguing, doesn't matter if it's pop culture, doesn't matter if it's sports, news, the world... If something looks cool, I'm going to be talking about it and raving over it for the next couple of minutes, however long that might be. This is just going to be a podcast for my thoughts and musings on certain certain topics. Again, I just I just want to talk. And this first issue of Ultimate Spider-Man, which I'm going to get into in a minute, astounded me to the point where I went, I have to do two videos on this. There is going to be a break. If you didn't watch yesterday's episode of New and Nerdum, and hopefully you guys do, it's in the, it's on my channel. Easy to get to. Oh boy, uh, we we are we are starting. I think a fantastic era for Spidey comics. Spidey fans are rejoicing at this book in what seems to be an escapade of just overall great feelings from everybody. I have not heard one person say anything negative about this book. And usually I like to say that for some titles, but, I, but usually when a book comes out, a comic book, you'll always get a small minor section of the fan base that just says, what the heck is this book? I hate it. You do something to radicalize the status quo, for, for example, for a certain character in the main universe. Some people might not be attuned to it. Some people did not like the new direction for the X-Men post-2019. That was the last big project that Jonathan Hickman was on for any of the big two companies. He's never worked at DC, but he's always labeled himself as a DC guy that isn't he hasn't shied away from it. But that being said, there were people who were, I don't even know if outspoken is the right word. There are a lot of people who just did not care for the Island stuff. They wanted to return back to Claremont. Some even wanted to return back to Morrison, even though Hickman is just, just a evolution of Morrison, but that that's a completely different topic for a completely different time. Jonathan Hickman hasn't worked on anything this gigantic since house of x powers of 10 came out when hickman first started at marvel he worked his way up from fantastic four all the way up to secret wars uh, it was the building of a saga that he determined and put out to set and he masterfully weaved through thick and thin and all the needles that you could possibly put into with some of the characters that he had to either write off or change or just sort of have to attune himself to. He was able to perform outlandishly and end off both 616 and 1610 with a bang. I, I remember my, my good friend, Court. Uh, you can follow him at Court Car Carpenter on, on Twitter. I remember, or, uh, I remember talking to him we first met back in 2018 uh, about you know what what books we liked and we were we, he brought up secret wars and he i remember him telling me if marvel ended at secret wars i would be completely happy like if you just had the movies or whatever to go off on and you know, this, you know obviously you never want to wish that because these are awesome characters fantastic franchises and lots of stories to be told Lots of artists and creators who are waiting just to gush over their favorites. I mean, if you ended the the universe there, I, I think a lot of people wouldn't mind. Like it's a perfect ending. You had you have my favorite Peter Parker and Miles Morales moments too in Secret Wars. So it wasn't that Hickman was he couldn't write Spider Man. He's written great Spider Man. You read Future Foundation. If you read the funny bits in Avengers right before Infinity, it's not Peter Parker, but the way that he does write Dr. Octopus as Spider-Man, spoilers, if you haven't read Slot Superior Spider-Man yet, or even the story in Amazing Fantasy 1000, 
fantastic story with the same creator he's also working with to make this masterpiece. He can write Spidey. I get, the question I think for a lot of people was, could he, could he, there were, there were a lot of expectations. Like, could he live up not only to the hype that was surrounding this book because of his name and what he specifically means to Marvel? It's like Hickman is not small by any sword or form of stretch. This is a creator that has written some of Marvel's biggest books and events in the last one and a half decades. You have Marco Caketo, who's coming off of a also groundbreaking work with uh, Chip Zdarsky for Daredevil, one of my favorite Daredevil runs, if top four, top three, just depending on where I'm at in the day. But Marco Caketo, he worked on Amazing Spider-Man, Punisher, Daredevil. Now he's doing Ultimate Spider-Man. Could Hickman not only live up to the expectations he's already set up for himself with his past work, could he set up the expectations that a lot of people had set for him with the brand new universe and how Peter Parker was going to be written? This isn't a, a universe where you could just, you know, you had a lot of rules. It's it. This is a universe where he could pretty much do whatever he wanted to. It's not be held by anything of the sort. This was a completely brand new slate which I think helped him overall in the long run with some of the character decisions that he's made. Yeah, but the, the question was, could, could, could he live up to a lot of people's expectations for what they wanted in a Spider-Man comic? A lot of people have been, especially the, I don't want to call them the outspoken, but a lot of people who are big Peter Parker, Mary Jane fans, or just even Mary Jane fans, I think have been hurt by the editorial decisions over at Marvel to sort of, I don't even know if you want to call it relay, just overly opposed. A lot of people were opposed to the recent character decisions that Marvel has made in the last 15 years since, since one more day, 16, 17 years. It's been a long time since Peter Parker and Mary Jane got split up because they sold off their marriage to the devil. And you have Mephisto now who is clearly in control of that. And there's nothing that you, know, you can really do about that. There's, it's, it's, it's not like, oh, we can just move over. No, this was, this was for, for, for a lot of fans... I think the this was the break that they needed. And again, there there are so many words that I could say, but I think the one thing for certain is that this is the best number one issue that I've read in the in the seven years I've been collecting singles. Eight years. Eight years. I've been collecting singles since 2016. I've been extensively collecting singles since 2019. And I can tell you this, I don't think there's any Spider-Man fan who will read this and be dissatisfied because it hits on all of the bases that you need to create a good Spider-Man story. I've been reading a lot of the classic 60s, 70s Amazing Spider-Man. Shout out to my my, fan, my friend, Mr. Freven. He knows who he is. He gave me an extension on Marvel Unlimited to continue to read Amazing Spider-Man something that I've been very much enjoying for myself. And I, I wanted to know how Stan Lee and Jerry Conway and Roger Stern, Tom DeFalco, J.M. DeMattis, all of these big names. I wanted to know why people revered them so much. Pre-Clone Saga, pre-One More Day. I wanted to know why people just loved this character and gushed over Peter Parker as a character. That's something, when I first got into the comics, I... It's weird. I was never a Spidey kid. I grew up with Batman. I grew up with Batman Brave and the Bold. I grew up with Teen Titans and Young Justice. Those were my characters. Those were the characters that I stuck with. A lot of people grew up with the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the Avengers, the fantastic show. A lot of people love the 2000s, and including me. I think it might be my favorite cartoon in existence from Marvel. 
Spectacular Spider-Man. A lot of people loved Evolution growing up in the 2000s. Like those were people's characters. I I couldn't re- resonate with that because I was a DC kid, and I never understood the love that a lot of people had for Peter Parker. I I went in reading the 2000. 2000- 18 run of Spider-Man when Nick Spencer got on. I I I and I and I've I've read bits and pieces here and there from Zeb Wells' run because Patrick Gleason, who's my favorite artist, is drawing sections of the book. But for me, I I, I never understood why people loved the character. I always see friends or other people doing TikToks or watching TikToks of why they love Spider-Man. If it's in any case, like look at the numbers. And the love and acclaim for the last two animated movies that Sony created for the Spider-Verse. People love these characters. I understand why now. You read the old Stan Lee comics and my gosh, it is a perfect blend of soap opera and superhero. You get, yes, you get your Peter Parker beats up Dr. Octopus or the Green Goblin. If you want, if you read the, the old '60s stuff, the Enforcers, mo, like Lizard, etc., all your classic Spider-Man villains, you got that fill. But what makes Peter Parker a lovable character isn't necessarily the fact that he's swinging along and he's whipping up his webs and defeating the bad guy. It has more, I think, to do so with the humanity that he has. The, relate, the relatability to that humanity that he has is what makes Peter Parker special. And it's why we want to continue reading Spidey. It, it, like, that's that's insane to me. Like, the character can have so much of that, that effort and, and everything else just all concocted up. And his name is Peter Parker. And we gravitate to that because there have been times when we're not going well like we're not doing well emotionally we're late for work we can't pay our bills we have family issues to worry about and it's all presented wonderfully in ultimate spider-man number one it is such a set up masterpiece a a well documented first issue That I don't, again, I don't even know if I have the words to say how great it is. You have Peter Parker, who is now, uh, he, uh, uh, minor spoilers. If you guys want to see my other complete thoughts, go watch Dom Reed's USM, which is coming out tomorrow. I I have so many, just, just all over my mind. But anyways, the setup is clear. You have Peter Parker, who is... Married to Mary Jane Watson, his kid. I won't even spoil the name of their of of his kids. Adorable. Again, it's it's mind boggling, perfect setup because of all the twists and turns that Jonathan Hickman uses, and that that's another thing too with this series. When people say, "Oh, someone turned the tables on this," usually sometimes in comics that might just mean one or two different character changes. But a lot of fans might not be averse to it. Like, like if you have, say, I, I, I see, I can't even, I can't even think of a perfect example to like put this in right now. I'm just trying to think of, like, think about something, right? If you have a brand, if you have a character and you introduce them to a new setting or radically change their supporting cast or just put them in a different field, have them grow up or something, some people will love it. Some people will hate it. But my goodness, you have all of these different characters. J. Jonah Jameson is is in this issue, and he's done fantastic. Just, you guys got to read it for yourselves to see what I'm talking about. This is also, I think, the best number one issue ever. Because number one issues are supposed to hook you in. The way that my podcast co-host on New and Nerdum, Dylan, describes it is it's the first sentence or the first paragraph of an essay. Usually when we read, like if you're a teacher reading a paper, don't you want to be invested into the paper? You can obviously feel that the the love and emotion too. This goes for not just this, but for all comics. 
when you read a comic book, the last thing, the, 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 the main thing that you want to do is make an impression. Now, what type of impression is going to depend on obviously the book that you're reading, but the, the bigger of an impression it makes, the better of a comic it is because comics are supposed to make you feel something. You don't, I don't know what that emotion is because it doesn't apply for all comics. You don't, you know, if, if you read like the difference between Mr. Miracle by Tom King and and Captain America by Rick Remender. Two completely different books, two completely different emotions from how you read there. And obviously that that's the whole but the whole point of a comic book is supposed to make you feel something. It's supposed to make you go oh my goodness in different aspects. And you can take that line however you want to. The main thing is you just have there has to be something there for you as a reader to gravitate and grasp. Because if nothing, it's, a, it's an emotionless comic book. Why are you reading it? But the, um, the amount of emotions that Hickman puts you through for, for, for literally the entire ride, there's not one page where it feels lifeless. This is a book filled with life. A Peter Parker that is filled with life. And you understand everything about his character, everything with his motivations in relations to everyone else I'm again I'm just astounded Spider-Man books should always I think be this good. You know why? Cuz Spider-Man is the I would argue the most human hero we have in the comic book landscape. And again this is coming from someone who never understood the hype around Spider-Man when he was a kid when they were a teenager, when they're an adult. It's... I mean, again, I have, I don't know if I just have the words without, without spoiling it. Hickman, Kaketo, Matt Wilson on colors, the amount of love that is just crafted into this. This is the Spider-Man book that people have been waiting for for the last... 17 years that Peter Parker and his comic books have been coming out. And it's no shame to any of the creators who were on Spider-Man before. There's a lot of Dan Slott stuff that I love. Superior Spider-Man, some of my favorite Spider-Man comics are in there because of the twists and turns. But I think the twists and turns here are... It's, it's magnified to an extent just because of how well done Hickman crafts the comic book and tugs at your emotions on every sophisticated level to make you go, man, Peter Parker, that good old Parker luck. One of my favorite issues too, I, I believe it's from, I, I want to say it's ASM number 26 by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. I could be wrong. At the end of the issue, Pete and Aunt May are talking. They're talking about life. Petey has to go adjust and do something. And Aunt May gives him a you know nice warm hug. And the captions just say, isn't there just a little bit of Peter Parker in all of us? That is exactly what I'm feeling with with this book. Again, I, th I think the strengths of Spider-Man and why people love the character so much just have to come down to his humanity and Jonathan Hickman captures it on a level that it seemed better than I think anyone else in the industry does right now. And that is saying something because of the amount of books that we've had for this character that are coming out right now and have come out but you just have it it's every everything is in here i i mean i'm in tears and then you have kaketo who's just drawing it beautifully the the, the color palette is fantastic as matt wilson always brings his a game wonderful job wonderful job everybody from marvel for for green lighting this book and for letting it come out. Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening to the first episode of Domentary. Please like, subscribe if you haven't. Comment what your thoughts on USMR, UBU, and as always, 
Have an epic day.